Hey YouTube, it's Demetri, and today I'm gonna go over a few awesome textbooks and kind of things that I like for Christmas. They're mainly textbooks. Um, but I'm gonna talk about the ones that I have that I just really love. I think they're great additions to any sort of collection. Uh, if you're looking for a fun new interesting book to read here. And then I'm gonna unbox a few of the books that I really, really want. Um, so I bought them for myself. <laughs> so I've got a few on my Christmas list as well. Um, but let's just dive on in. All right, so the first book, which I've been getting a bunch of questions about, uh, is Introduction to Stochastic Processes with R uh, by Robert Dobro. Dobro. Um, it's this book. I'll put a link in the description below. You can find my affiliate links. Again, it doesn't cost anything extra, but Amazon gives me a little bit of a kickback saying thank you for recommending um, purchasing products on our site. Costs you nothing more. Um, and it does support this channel a little bit. Anyways, this book I have really, really enjoyed. Uh, I went through class, took Stochastic Calculus. So for those of you that have been through a quant finance masters and you know the hell of taking stochastic calculus. Uh, I think the applications are not taught very well in most programs. Uh, I think the applications um, are also a little hand wavy in many classes, which is why I recommend students take multiple classes on stochastic calculus. But this book covers stochastic processes, which I think is more applicable and more interesting. Um, this book specifically, I've had quite a bit of fun with because it has R code. And so you can kind of go in and set things up and copy and paste or type out the code. And then you can kind of play around um, with the, the code a little bit, make adjustments and see how things are gonna react. But to give you guys kind of an idea of what this book covers, there's an introduction to probability, um, of course, because this book is just you know, probabilistic modeling. That's what stochastic processes are. Um, and it goes through different things like Markov chains, you know. Um, it also goes through branching processes and, you know, Markov chains are short run versus long run, run dynamics. Um, Poisson processes, continuous time Markov chains, Brownian motion. So this book, I think, takes a more statistical and probability kind of perspective and view, more of a hands-on applicable understanding of things like Brownian motion. And I think this makes it clearer to go into stochastic calculus, especially if you're wanting to work with option pricing and all that. Uh, I think it gives you a better understanding of how this works in more of a dynamical space. And you can get ideas of how you could apply this to like generic stock prices that are not derivative pricing. Um, anyways, and there's just some reviews too in the back of this book, like a probability review, a matrix algebra review, um, some of the topics you're going to need to really dive in. But again, I really like this book. I think it is very simply written. It is not for finance. It's not a finance specific book, um, but you can easily grasp the ideas the way it's taught. The code makes it kind of fun to play with. Um, but overall, it's a really enjoyable book. I'll probably do an official book review sometime in the future. And I know you always hear me say this all the time. Um, I have a whole stack of books I wanna do reviews on. I just haven't had the time. The second book, which I'd recommend that I currently own, as I've talked a little bit about this in other book reviews, is analysis a financial time series um, by Say. Um, yeah, it's a pretty thick book. It covers a lot of topics. Um, just to give you kind of some ideas here, there's a linear uh, time series analysis and its applications. There's financial time series and their characteristics, nonlinear modeling and their applications, whole section on heteroscedastic models, um, high frequency trading, continuous time models, extreme value theory and value at risk. Again, multivariate time series, principal component analysis and factor models. So everybody asks me about factor models. This is a really interesting book because it covers a lot of these topics, um, but I like that it covers the time series first, which will give you a better understanding of how to actually apply these a little bit better. Um, then it covers things like volatility models, state space models, and Kalman filters, uh, or Kalman filters, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods with applications. Um, again, this book is thick. It is interesting. Uh, it also has some code written in this book, so I don't know if you can see... So you can't really see it, but it also has um, some R code in this book as well. Um, again, I think this is probably a really fun and exciting book. It is a great book for someone who's like junior, senior level of undergrad maybe. You've taken at least some math, some finance, um, some probability, you're starting to kind of get into it. For grad students, this book is absolutely amazing. This is taught at many of the programs I review. Um, I think it's a great combination. So the reason you should actually buy a book like this, because it's expensive, I think it's like 100 and, I don't know, 10 bucks, $120. Um, the book itself, I think, does a great job of bringing you into like applications of actual financial problems you would use, how to use kind of math and stats to do the modeling, and then a little bit of programming to kind of see how to implement this and kind of 
build out these kind of processes here. So I think it's a great book in the sense that it'll pique your interest. Um, it'll show you actual real world applications uh, and it will bring kind of all the pieces and parts together so you can get a better feel for what quant finance is um, if you're kind of like wondering, should you do this as a career or not? All right, now things I have recently purchased myself. Um, I absolutely love uh, these Twist Erase 3 pencils here. I'll put a link to them. Uh, it's just a generic like black mechanical pencil. Um, it's 0.7 um, you know, millimeter lead or whatnot. Uh, it has a the click, so it clicks. You just click the back of it uh, to get the lead to come out. Um, but the best feature is one, it's smooth and sleek. I feel like I can write with them easier. Uh, the eraser though is the, the, the twist one. So when you twist this, uh, the eraser comes up. Um, I like these because I can get just the right amount of eraser. Um, the other garbage pencils that I have seen and have are like these crappy ones. So these are like the super cheapo pencils. Um, I don't know if you can hear it, but these things like rattle and they clank and like add and I feel like the grippy part in the bottom that holds the, the lead a lot of time doesn't work very well. They just feel cheap in my, I don't know. I don't like the feel of them. I think they're cheap. The erasers absolutely suck. If you know about these erasers, it's just a little one piece of eraser that's solid that sits in there. And of course, as I use it a few times, it gets flat and then it's garbage. Like I don't want that pencil. Uh, the other ones are the ones I used in grad school quite a bit are these like standard, I don't know what brand they are. Um, they are the same brand. They are Pentel, but they are quick click ones. Uh, they have, again, a, a clicking thing on here. I don't know. I find it kind of annoying and hard to use <laughs> compared to my the black ones that I absolutely love here. Uh, the other thing I can't stand is that the, the way it snaps in the top piece, you got to take out here to put the lead in. I always feel like it's like clanky as well, and like cheap and garbagey. And the erasers have this little slider. So you can only have so much like it, it has to be an increment of like, I don't know, a quarter inch or whatever it increases it by. Um, but it drives me nuts because it's always too much. And then it's like, it, it's too little. Um, I don't know. These ones are okay. I don't like them that much though. But I bought more of these. If you want to use mechanical pencils, I use pencil for everything because I do math and I write and draw and I have to erase things. Um, I've had this pencil for probably over a decade now and I absolutely love it. I've never bought any other ones. So this year I bought a three pack. And then we're going to open an Amazon box because I actually bought a book. Um, I actually bought two books, but only one in the box. Okay, it's Machine Learning in Finance. Um, it is by Matthew Dixon, uh, Igor Halperin, and Paul Belokan. Belokan? I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, I absolutely hate finance and machine learning put together. The reason is most of the books I have seen, the most of the discussions I have seen have been complete garbage. Um, anyways, I've been following uh, Igor on, on LinkedIn. I've been slowly following his work, uh, looking at some of his presentations. Um, it's been over a year of me just kind of stalking him essentially and looking at a lot of his work. Uh, Matthew Dixon too has been coming up on my LinkedIn a little bit here and there. I'm getting the feeling they are bright individuals and they are not some of the garbage books that I've seen written. And because of that, I messaged him and asked him, uh, Igor, for a little bit of description on his portion that he wrote, like what's great about it, what's different about it. Um, I won't spoil anything yet, but I'm pretty excited to read this book. Again, it is published by Springer. So that helps tell you it's a little bit of a better book than other mass producers that are just producing garbage books. Um, they also, all three, I think at least the first two, I don't know about Paul. Uh, the other two though, actually work in the quant finance industry. Uh, I think both of them got buy side quant of the year last year, 2022. Uh, so I'm have high hopes for this book and I'm really excited to read it. And of course I will try to do a book review on it. Um, even if it's maybe just uh, Igor's section here. There is another book I will post a picture for up here on the screen. It is on chaos theory and I think like non-linear dynamic models. Um, anyways, the book keeps popping up. I just haven't had time to dig into these sorts of topics a little bit deeper here. Um, it kind of plays into the work that I'm currently doing here at my current job at Agora. And so I am, you know, wanting to read and study and do that. So I put that on my list and bought that as well. Uh, of course, there is a, another book. I'll put a picture on here as well. Uh, it's by Fisher Black. I've been wanting to read this book for quite some time. It's been hard to find the book at a reasonable price. Um, of course, it's going to have to be used. Um, but I really just enjoy Fisher Black's writing, his thought processes, the way that he approaches problems and looks at them. Um, I have an economics background as well. He has math, but he came at everything from a very economical standpoint here of how econ 
you know, ties into things and market equilibriums. This is also on my list. Um, but that's really what's on my list is here. Those are the things that I really wanted. Um, other things too that have been not quantum related are books on, um, for example, uh, Roger Penrose has a book, um, again, on physics. I just find it interesting and fascinating, uh, the different perspectives of it, uh, his perspective specifically on how the Big Bang was an event, but it was not the beginning of time or the beginning of everything. I have believed that for a very long time, so I'm curious to see his perspectives and thoughts and arguments. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff on there as well, but not quant related, nothing that would excite you guys. But anyways, if you find any of these gifts kind of interesting or you know whatnot, if you're gonna buy them, I would encourage you guys to use the links below. It really helps support this channel. So it's a big thank you um, from you guys uh, if you can help me out in that way. Um, if you do read any of the books that I have listed, I would love to see your guys' response in the comments below. So if you've already read the book to use it in grad school, like let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, that will help other subscribers and people watching this as well. And thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, until next time.